Hi folks, back again, Bathrobe Chronicles on the road, number eight. Uh, some of these things are sort of sounding like a fireside chat. Uh, quasi or pseudo, who knows. Uh, but anyway, uh, I've been without internet for a couple of days, and uh, I taped three, four, five, six of these things. No, maybe yeah, three at least. And I didn't like any of them. I made some notes the other night, then I lost the notes. I couldn't find the notes, so I actually wanted to be outside where you would see something other than my face. And, you know, I was at a picnic table and the trailers in the background and all that kind of mess. But, boy, the, the, uh, I just was going nowhere with it. So I have some notes, and hopefully I'll be a little more organized tonight. Uh, what do I want to talk about? Well, uh, I, I think there's several people who seem to be enjoying these for whatever reason uh, uh, who are in the process of either ordering or uh, are anticipating picking up uh, their trailer before too long. So uh, I, I sort of want to start from that angle. I would encourage anyone who can go to go to Rice. No, not to go there and... and uh, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> uh, just go if you can, especially if you now if you're an experienced camper and you've had trailers before, it ain't no big deal. You know, if it's more convenient, have the daggone thing delivered because you know, you know what the trailer is about, and you know what to do. But if you're a new person and this is your first trailer, I would really encourage it. Uh, the uh, two aspects: one, you will have someone right there to answer all of your questions, and two. Uh, obviously, I would encourage you to stay at least one night so you can use everything in the trailer and make sure everything works. And I'm pretty sure from what, the, you know, you, you read on the forums and everything, I'm pretty sure everything's going to work. Everything in my work fine. Uh, so, but I would encourage you to do that. Now, if you don't have any preference, I stayed uh, at a Best Western. The reason I did is Harold told me it was the newest motel around. I don't like staying in motels. But it was an okay motel, and it, it's just a few miles from the factory, and there are quite a few places around there, uh, you know, to, to eat and stuff like that. And also, for you few people out there who are still smoking, you can get a smoker's room. That was pretty cool. Uh, so, let me see. What else? Uh, where to stay? There's a... I stayed at the American RV place. It was about 32 bucks, and I got a good Sam's discount or something uh, and the and the folks there were delightful there were two gentlemen one I believe is the owner and the other you know works there whatever delightful and they always had hot coffee in the office and uh, they you know they one fellow because when I was there it was 12 degrees I think the first night said hey if something happens you know I'm right next door to you come on over you know you can stay over here really nice people but frankly, it's not what you'd call a picturesque uh, uh, campground. Now, a lady sent me a note uh, who just picked up her trailer a few weeks ago, a couple, three weeks ago, and she stayed at a Corps of Engineers place, which is further down the road from uh, the American. Uh, I'm sure you can find it, you know, a search or something. Plus, it was really reasonable. I think it was 18 or 20 bucks or something. I'm not telling you not to stay at the American. I'm just telling you. Uh, the nice thing about the American is uh, Walmart is like a mile away or a half a mile away. And I'll tell you, I've been living at that place. I have bought so much junk there, I can't even believe it. I went today and bought a daggone vacuum cleaner, for crying out loud. Uh, but I bought a lot of stuff there. Anyway, where was I? Uh, where to stay and so on and so forth. Uh, by the way, for, for those of you who don't have that ball holder thing, you know, that tube that slides in the hitch, uh, you can get those at Casita. I don't remember what I paid, but it was little of nothing. And what I felt was, you know, I would be much better served by going there and they, you know, they have the trailer there and they know which one to put on and all of that and instead of trying to guess which one to buy. So they do have the... Uh, that ball holder gizmo in the ball, so you don't have to worry about that. Uh, of course, what they don't want to do, I'm sure, and I'm not speaking for them, they don't want to go through a whole lot of wiring mess, you know, have your wires and all that stuff set when you get there. 
Now, as, as far as what kinds of options to order, you know, it's all kind of a personal deal, more or less. I was kind of disappointed uh, that the vinyl flooring cost so much. I think it's what three hundred bucks or something. Uh, I'm also was disappointed that they didn't offer a wood option uh, because you know that cost little or nothing really. Uh, frankly, my salesman was really kind of a neat guy. I like him, Harold Clemens, and he said, "Hey, you know, don't don't worry with the vinyl." He said, "If you ever get to the point where you can't stand the carpet, you know, have somebody else put something in or what have you." I'd really like to have some wood put in here, which would really look slick. And I'd be willing to bet you that uh, any skilled carpenter could do that for a couple of hundred bucks. But of course, you know, that's up to you. I'd much rather have that smooth surface so when you drop something or break something or spill something, it's easier to get up. Uh, now the microwave, I'll tell you, I lived on a boat for three to four years and I did not have a microwave, excuse me. I didn't order the microwave for two reasons. One, it's too expensive. You know, you buy a little tiny one for almost nothing. And I really didn't want to give up the storage space. Now, on the end of this video, I'm going to tack on another video, which is going to show what I did as far as how I'm, you know, I've got a little shelf in there. Uh, but anyway, you'll see that. It'll be tied on to the end of this. Now that electric tongue thing, you know, out on the front, you push the button and the gizmo goes up and down. I really like that. <laughs> I'm not sure how much that was, but boy, that, that is pretty cool. You just sit there and push the thing, you know, and it goes up and down. I would really recommend that. I asked Harold about the fan for the fridge. He said, don't buy it, and I didn't. Uh, and of course, the floor plan I have is obvious here. You know what it is. Uh, I'm not saying which one you should or shouldn't get. Uh, the obvious thing is you get the captain's chairs, you lose all the storage. And believe me, uh, you know, storage is good. You know, you don't have but so much of it. Although, uh, it, it's kind of amazing. Of course, what I'm doing is I'm putting everything in boxes. In other words, everything is going to be in a box. And as soon as I get it juggled around as to which box is going to hold what and all of that, I'm actually going to put one of those little tape things on them or use a sharpie or something but <clears throat> and I'm not saying this is the way to go but as far as I'm concerned it is for me and in other words all your camera junk and your uh, what, all those wires and adapters and and chargers and you know all in one box so you aren't like fumbling all over the daggone trailer trying to find what you're doing and uh, anyway that's just my opinion what do I know <clears throat> excuse me so that's the storage stuff now, this, this trailer business, if you will, <laughs> is costing a heck of a lot more than I thought it was. I didn't sit down and say, what is this going to cost to be on the road? Uh, because I, I never even considered gas as significant. But gas is significant. Uh, for instance, at $3.10 a gallon, now I was driving faster than maybe I should, and I have a Honda Ridgeline, by the way. Uh, it would cost me to go 200 miles, $62. You can almost rent a Learjet for that, 62 bucks. So I think another thing, uh, assuming that you're on some kind of budget, is when you head out, and I would imagine most of you who are watching this actually have to work for a living, uh, and you most likely won't be heading out for long. <coughs> I, 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 I guess if if you know, if, if money is a consideration, you know, you might want to <coughs> consider going at one place and staying a little longer than maybe, uh, uh, you know, you had imagined on these romantic travels all over the country and all of that. But here again, I don't know, you know, it's your money and it's, it's what you want to do, uh, obviously. Uh, I had no idea what I was going to do. Frankly, I wouldn't have been surprised if I had headed home uh, right away staying in uh, Cracker Barrels the whole way uh, because I was pretty apprehensive about towing this daggone trailer. I, I'm, I'm being serious. I'm not trying to be cute. I'm not trying to be facetious. It wouldn't have surprised me at all if I jumped in that baby and just headed home, man, and said, let me just get home, you know. But hey, it's great out here. <laughs> I don't want to be home. <laughs> uh, let me see what else. 
So I guess one, one thing, and I may have mentioned this a little bit on the previous one when I was wandering around out there at the beach, is, is what, what do we hope to accomplish, to use that word, when we go camping, you know, to call it camping. Uh, uh, and, and as I said, you know, often you read, you know, people's blogs and things like that, and they say, oh, I went to so-and-so city, and I went to, oh, you've got to go to Jack's Barbecue. It's the best barbecue in the world. Uh, oh, yeah, and then the other day we had drinks at such and such. And I'm not saying that's not a good thing to do. Don't get me wrong, you know, to each his own. I mean, I've been to Whataburger, <laughs> which I thought was great. And I've been to Walmart, and that's about it. But frankly, and I showed you what this campground looks like. As of this moment, and keep in mind, I've only been doing this a half hour, so to speak. Uh, this is just great. Now, now, granted, the last few days I've been trying to organize the trailer, and I've, you know, spent an hour or two each day dorking around and buying boxes and putting things in boxes and moving things around, and all of that. Oh, speaking of boxes, uh, underneath the bed, boy, do I have a ton of stuff. I mean, a ton. I've got uh, two long boxes as long as I could find, and they're about six inches deep. One has a bunch of, I don't even know what in it, and the other has uh, underwear and socks and stuff like that. Uh, then I've got two more boxes that go under there, and I'm trying to figure out what I'm putting in those. Actually, for one person, this isn't all that bad. If, if, in other words, if you don't waste any space, it's, it's really not all that bad. Uh, and also, the Honda Ridgeline, I think it's one of the few trucks that has it, uh, has this, uh, you, you go to the bed, of the truck and you know open the gate up and there's this huge storage compartment in the floor of the bed I mean huge so what my plans are is like if I'm gonna be somewhere for if I if I don't want to go to the town so to speak uh, for a bunch of days you know you can have a whole lot of canned goods and you know soft drinks or beer or whiskey whatever you want you know in that big storage place out there and that would allow you to, you know, spend more time in the campground and not have to worry about going back and forth to buy food. Uh, so that, that's that thought for whatever it's worth. Oh, by the way, I'm, oh, you guys are going to love this. I'm at this campground. I think it's great here. And I'm saying, well, I'm going to have to move or at least go dump somewhere because when I at, talk to the people about this place, they said there was electricity and... Uh, what do you call it? Water. So I was getting ready, uh, two days yesterday, yeah, yesterday I was getting ready to ask my, uh, day before I was getting ready to ask my neighbor, where do you go to dump? Because he's been here for a while. He's going to be, stay here most likely at least two weeks. So I was, went over to the uh, dumpster to dump some trash, and lo and behold, there's a dump station there. I mean, what a moron. Uh, <laughs> I, I guess all campgrounds have dump stations. Some of them just don't have them, you know, right where you are. Uh, but I thought that was kind of funny. You guys might get a chuckle out of that. So that I don't run over my time, I'm going to stop and I'll come right back.